Hi there, Sandra here from the Schwoben's Nest. Thanks for joining me today. This tray I picked up at a thrift store for about $2.99 a while back. It has some green paint on it already. That was a project that I started and then abandoned for something different. So I thought it's time for this tray to get a real makeover. I'm covering the whole bottom of the tray with DIY chalk paint. If you're interested in that recipe, it's down in my description box. For the frame of the tray, I'm using Folk Art Home Decor chalk paint in the color Maui Sand. It's a nice dark gray. I'll be doing one coat and then just touching it up where a little bit of the wood is showing through, but I will be distressing it, so I only will need one coat for this. Here's how it looks so far. And what I'm gonna do is draw some shiplap lines. So I'm just marking the center and then I'm going on either side about two and a half, two and three quarter inches. And I'm gonna mark that as well. I'm going to do the shiplap lines up and down. So they're gonna be vertically, not horizontally on this piece. I've seen a lot of creators use a Sharpie marker to draw their shiplap lines and then distress them. I prefer to just use a pencil line because it's nice and thin. It ends up being a little rough like the texture of whatever I'm putting the line on and I don't have to distress it. It just kind of looks more natural. So that is my preference just to use a pencil instead of a marker. So here's a red truck stencil that I actually cut out myself, not with a Cricut, but with a stencil burner. I'll have that link down in my description box along with the stencil blanks. I drew this truck on a piece of paper and then I cut out the stencil and I think it turned out pretty good for my first attempt at using these products. I'm using a makeup sponge, which is my go-to for stenciling. You can get a pack of about 20 or 30 of these from the Dollar Tree. I'm actually almost out, so I'm gonna go need to do a Dollar Tree run and get my stash all set up again. I'm just going to use some black DIY chalk paint. And the reason I use chalk paint a lot is because it covers really nicely with one coat. You could use acrylic paint for this too, but you might have to do a couple of different coats. So that's the reason why I use chalk paint. I am participating in a challenge hosted by my very good friend, Sonia at Domestic Diva DIY. She asked us to do a DIY challenge for fall or Halloween. So I decided to do a little bit of a farmhouse Halloween theme for you today. If you haven't seen Sonia's channel, please go over and check it out. Her link will be down in my description box. I absolutely love the part when I peel up the stencil and reveal what has been created underneath. I think it turned out really sweet. One thing I'm gonna do is do another layer of acrylic paint on top of the wood rails. So I stenciled them with burnt umber acrylic paint, which was not a chalk paint, just a regular acrylic paint. And I do want to have a second coat on it to make the color much deeper. I also didn't like the way the wood rails were kind of just floating in the back of the truck. So I'm just using the same brush with the burnt umber and just making some vertical lines to look like the wood rails are actually attached to the truck. When you're done watching my video, please click on my description box and check out the playlist. There's gonna be lots of inspiration and beautiful things being created. This project is going to turn into a farmhouse Halloween sign. And I'd really like to know your thoughts on this. Would you like to see more farmhouse Halloween related DIYs or is fall more your style and you'd just like to see me create more of those? Let me know in the comments what you'd like to see in the next couple of weeks before I start all of my Christmas DIYs. What I'm creating here are the bottoms of the witch brooms and I'm just using a little paintbrush and kind of flicking it out. I didn't show you how I did it first so here's another look at how I actually created these little brooms. 
This last broom had a little bit more paint on it and I actually liked that look better. So I took my brush and a little bit more paint and gave the rest of the brooms more of a thicker look. I just used a little bit of burnt umber to show where the broom was held together. Then I brushed on just a tiny bit of the burnt umber into the actual whisk part of the broom just to give it more texture. To draw the handle of the broom, I just took my paintbrush and kind of dabbed it into the spots where I wanted it to be. And then I took a very fine point brush and just finished things off a little bit nicer. I've had these Dollar Tree rub-on transfers for a while. Every time I'm at Dollar Tree and I see some of them, I grab them because they don't last very long. They're really handy. They are perfect for this project. And the reason I'm using them instead of doing it with a stencil or freehand is because I wanted to show you how easy it is to make your own type of sign. I use the truck stencil. I did hand paint the brooms, but I want you to be able Able to recreate things a little more easily too. The other advantage to this is being able to make a rounded shape. So I'm going to be putting the words Old Salem Broom Company and I want them to go in an arc like you see a lot of professional and high-end signs. They've got things on an arc and not necessarily always straight. Now I had two packages of these letters, but I still ran out of the O's. So for the word old and the word company, I'm using a Q, but I will be trimming off that little tail. And here I'm just setting it up to make sure it's all going to fit the way I want it to. I'm going to start off by trimming the little tail from the queue and then I'm going to start applying the transfers. They're super easy. You just peel off the transfer which is attached to the plastic on the top and then you just press it down and I just used my fingernail to rub it on until I, the plastic started to move and the plastic came off and the letter was adhered to my sign. So it turned out perfect. Here I've got my little mini stencil letters. I'll have those linked down in my description box because they're a must to have if you like to make signs and you want to have tiny little letters that look really good. I'm gonna put the words established 1672 using these little minis. While I wait for my little mistake to dry, I had started stenciling something else and then it started to bleed. So I had to go over it with some white paint. I'm just waiting for that to dry. So I figured I'll just take advantage of that drying time and do a little white dry brushing on the tray itself. I'm starting to do uh, some more words on the side here. I want to put handcrafted and spellbound and instead of using paint like I did the first time and then I had to redo it, I'm just using a marker. These stencils are so tiny it's sometimes better just to use a marker to trace them rather than paint because the paint sometimes will bleed. I wanted these little letters to look more like the rub-on transfers, but I didn't want to put that much effort into it. So I'm just taking a fine tip marker and drawing a line on the right hand side of each of the letters, just following the curve of the letter. I also decided to do the same effect with the brooms and the truck, just to give them more of a 3D look. I really love the way this is turning out, but I still thought that there needed to be a little something underneath those tiny letters, so I decided just to freehand a little witch's hat. For the last and final touch, I decided to draw a little black cat sitting in the truck pretending to drive. So I printed off this free printable from the internet. You can see that little cat and I'm just going to put his face up until his neck and then just put a little bit of a tail on him. The final touch is just to do a little bit of black dry brushing up and down to make it look a little bit more aged and distressed.
I'd like to thank Sonia for hosting the challenge. It was a lot of fun. If you like farmhouse style decor, I'd love for you to stick around a while by clicking the subscribe button. Those two black arrows will show you right where to click. Thanks so much for watching. Bye for now.